Here we go. This is uh, some old, old movies with the slot that's is on. No, let's see. Oh, this is in the backyard here at the house, and uh, there's a squirrel and a feeder that we had made out of a old soap dispenser. Now you can see the squirrel. I have the squirrel going to try to jump and get in there. There he, there he goes. Up, oh, he missed. There he goes. There, up, oh, there he missed again. Now there's Caspara and Uncle Fred and Marie and Johanna. There's Salvina having a beer. This is up at Island Lake, a picnic. There's Lester feeding his face and Oscar in the background. It looks like Salvina again. I don't know who those kids are there. They're all grown up and have kids now, I suppose. And there's somebody on the dock. I think this here must have been at uh, Caribou Lake or... Well, no, I think this here was up at... Uh, no, this was up where Lester and Jackie stay. That's uh, Dick there, throwing the horseshoe, Dick Slotness. There, you make a ringer. There's Jackie in her bathing suit, a cigarette in her hand. Caspar in the background. There comes Dorothy. Yeah. On the Ferds. I think this is Island Lake here. That, yeah, this is Island Lake. There's Marie. There's Caspar. There's Selvina, that must be her daughter. There's John, John Slotness. He's having a beer. Now these here little kids here, now they're all growing up. I don't know, there's uh, Selvina's husband. There's Inga, there's Alfred. There's, uh, that looks like it, there. who's there? There's Caspar and there's Johanna. There. There's Tom. I can't think of some of their names right off the bat here. There's Jackie. Marie. There's, I think that's Arvid. Frida. Walt. There's Jim, Jim Kohler, Ing standing in the background. Now this is out in California. This is uh, where my sister lived there, up in Glendale, or outside of Glendale. There she comes with the kids. That Jan and Pat. There's Dad, over Jan. Ah, this is the Rose Bowl Parade when we were out there. I don't know what the heck years were that. Well, that must have been in the 50s. <clears throat> they sure got much bigger and nicer floats now, but this was really something at the time. There's Mexico, land of charm and contrast. Now when we look at the movies here, they're much, a little more sharp, the color is a little bit more sharp. There's go. Running down. That must be the Seven Dwarfs uh, and Snow White, I believe. They're from Haiti. 
Papa Doc, Mark the Dimes, Haiti, Caribbean. Ah, oh, now who's that? That must be Hopalong Cassidy or somebody. Yeah, that's, that's old Hopalong Cassidy there. Burbank. There comes the Budweiser horses. St. Louis. Getting a cup of coffee here. Oh, look at that. Bathing beauties. Looks like a Viking ship there. That, I think that's Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. Post cereals. Yeah, that's, I'm pretty sure that's who that is there. There's Tommy, and they're going to do some barbecue, some chicken in the backyard now. He had quite a setup there. There's Lyman. He's putting a little sauce on the chicken. I'm going to have a beer. He got some other goodies there. There's Dad. He's stretched out, having a little nap of the sunshine. He sure enjoyed that trip. Here we got them all dressed up in the cook outfit. We're going to have a have a can of beer. And there, that Christmas day, we got the lawnmower out there cutting the grass. Uh, the grass wasn't that long, but we had to have some little action on the on the movies, I guess. There, Dad's going to sample now that sauce that we put on the chicken. Oh yeah, cut him in the axe. We're going to have a skull of fiskin, he says. There. There's Sally. There. Oh, this is down at Tom's. Walt, there comes Marie, and I can't let's see if we did here. I'm so clear. Frida and Elna, and look like Dad. There's Tom. We must be going to go for a little ride someplace. This is out in the backyard. There's the Kohler boys there playing ping pong. There. <laughs> now the here's on the way home again. This is in Las Vegas. They're getting out of the car. Got a doorman there. There comes Ing. Out of the motel. Going up, got to go up and make some money up in Las Vegas. <laughs> Everybody had been smoking cigarettes then years ago. That took Dad. I suppose he ain't going to come out now. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get the. Well, I don't know. That doesn't look like Christian Brothers there. It was always Christian Brothers. Oh, no, that's back. The day I got back home and used up the rest of the film. There's my dog. Here we go now. <coughs> this here is uh, over in Liberia on the railroad. There's one of the bridges. They used to drive the cars over and the people walk on it and everything else. We had some pretty narrow mud cuts over there. These here film, to begin with, there they don't have too much color in them because I was, uh, didn't use a light meter. I was using a light meter. Then after I quit using a light meter, I got better pictures. And then when you transfer them off the movies onto a tape like this, then you lose some of the color. There's a woman with some washing. Here, they're sanding the rails so we get over a mountain. We had a what they call a mountain over there. 
pretty steep grade. And the sanders were used to plug up because of the high humidity, and that's uh, one of the natives out there sanding the rail. So, like we do, we used to do with the Mallies years ago, we'll get out there and sand the rail. Now, oh, there's a boy there, he's showing off. Now we're going out to a derailment. We, that's Gundy sitting there with his cap on and a bunch of natives. They had to pick up a bunch of ties. They had a sun kink out there, and we had to go out there and get these engines back on the rat track so we could make some money, make some money for the company. There's Lyman running a 27. Now yeah. oh, that's uh, Junior Martin. He's backing a cat off there. To I forget what mile post this was. I think it was around 38. There's one of the locomotives. It was a sun kink, and uh, we didn't have too good of a road bed over there. And uh, during that hot weather, sometimes you you had that trouble. And then at night, then the, the rails would spread apart. But this wasn't too bad. And it was. There's National Iron Ore Company Limited. There's the cat. Here's a fellow I work with. He's from uh, Bell Fountains, Ohio. Bob McCracken. He hurt his leg. He just tipped over a steam engine back in the state, so he had a bum leg on him. Heck of a nice guy. There he had a Volkswagen over there. That's where we lived in Bowman Hills. That was a brand new building we had. That's why I stayed right in that room, right on the end there. I didn't have air conditioning yet, but then after a while we got air conditioning. Well, there we are. We didn't have any caboose on the train over there. That, they had a couple of natives right on the air car, into our car for, oh, about 90 miles. That's a mile post, uh, about 24, I guess. There yeah, we're going through. It's all new they, railroad bed there, and uh, they didn't have the cuts. Later on, we got a drag line out there and opened them up a little bit anyway. This is going up to the mine. This is close to the mine going there. That was up the uh, Mano River, we call it up there. It was in the mountains where the ore was. It wasn't too good, high grade of an ore. Where RW worked, that was real high grade ore there. We used to get their ore and mix it with ours to bring up the grade. There's a turtle. They have turtles over there in Africa too. Well, there's some, there's uh, Gundy, and uh, now there's our cook. That John, our cook, and some of the house boys there that used to do our washing and cooking and keep our rooms clean and. You got the frying pan. This is uh, during rainy season, one of the rivers. I don't know if that's uh, Mano, no, not in Mano, that's uh, Lofa River, I guess. There's a woman carrying a log. Here's a wreck that I had. I laid two of them over down in a swamp. We didn't have any big hook to get them out of there. We had to bulldoze it all out, then put a rail down there. We put a, built a shoe fly first to run around it, then we used block and tackle here. You'll see where we rigged up block and tackle to pull them back up on, on, on top of the rail. There's a section man. There's a, the engine. I was lucky because there's Burma, one of my the head men there. There I had some white kids, riding, natives riding on a trailing unit. Lucky there's uh, the railroad superintendent. There's Gus. There's Charlie Rue, the, he was the head man over there. There's the training unit. Now you see where we put that rail down, and we built that rail down there, and built it up, and then we reached out with the locomotive and pulled that one out, pulled them both out. There, we got it out. Now we will be reaching down in there and pulling that out. Those fellas, they really knew their business. They flew some officials over from New York, and <coughs> they said it'd be a month before they'd be out of there, get those locomotives out. It was seven days, and they were out back in Bomi Hills. 
I had to bridge it before we had the railings on them. There's a diamond mine up in the background. There's some monkeys. This is my town. That's where we used to go and buy our cigarettes and beer and shaving lotion and stuff like that. There was all Lebanese merchants. There's uh, Gundy and uh, Merkel. You know, Daryl Merkel from up the road. I sent him a copy of this tape, but I sent uh, Gundy a copy. There's a bridge. We went back into a, a what they call those places, mission, mission. They're back there in the way back in the bush. There's a boy with some Beck's beer. There's a lineman coming up over the hill there, one of the mountains there. There's Burma, my head man there. He was on with that, and I had that wreck, but he jumped off before we went run right down in the ditch, down in the swamp. And there are lots of goats over there. There's Momo. He was my head man for a long time. When I left there, he quit too. He, he said that he couldn't work for another boss, man, he said. <coughs> ah, there's... Willard, he's from Bell Fountain. That's one of those walking cane or praying mantras, as you call them. They had lots of those over there. That's John, our cook. He's got that. He's got that praying mantra by the snoot. These are hall packs are made by the Turner Westinghouse. That fellow there, he's from up in Brule. We're loading it up and hauling it up. There's Gundy. He's from Brule. Heck of a nice guy to work with. Yeah, he says, take off, let's go. We got some Millers there. Rule G violation. I put that in there so you'd see Rule G. There's a full growing deer. They call those mountain deer over there. There, Gundy. There's the little deer. They had one for, like that for a pet down there by the at the port. And we didn't, that's our yard office. It was just like these shacks you see back in the woods that those loggers have with skids underneath. But then they built a real nice yard lot. Now we chartered an airplane and we flew up over the railroad, some fellas. We had uh, the dispatcher and a couple engineers and I. That's flying over. Uh, the railroad that R.W. Johnson worked for. We used to run over that railroad, too. There, the fellow that, was sitting, that you just seen, he got so sick that I had to take his pictures, too. That was a... There. That Boomy Hills, that's where we worked out of. Now we're going to go up from Boomy Hills up to the Mano River, up to the mine. Now, once in a while, you see, looks like the jungle's all cleared off. That's where the natives burn off the jungle to plant their crops. They used to grow cassava and rice and that, and it'd be good for a couple, three years. And then they'd uh, have to, there, you can see it. Then they have to burn another piece of jungle off because the soil wasn't much good after that. Uh, <clears throat> this is right above the equator, so we had lots of rain there. This is going down the river, or down the mountain. We had to stop there at night, and they'd have, have side dumps of rock, and it'd be dark out, and go out there and hook up the hoses, and there, right there is where we used to dump a lot of rock. Lucky we didn't have a, a mudslide there and lose some uh, engines. Now this is flying over to mine. This is where we got the haul the iron ore out of, and I worked up there too later on. You'll see some pictures. Yeah, we didn't land there. We just went down and skimmed along the airport. That, we, Of course, we had some scotch and some beer along, and the pilot, he drank just as much as the rest of us. He's one of them bush pilots. He used to fly to missionaries and everything into the jungle and prospectors and everything. Quite some real characters. 
You know, he's pointing out different places where airplanes had crashed in the jungle. I was glad. I was getting pretty sick there, too, in that airplane. I, I fell out next there's St. Paul Bridge right down in Monrovia. You can see the cars going on over there. Well, in, oh, here now. There's a young lady with a little baby. I don't know, we're out there for, it must be a holiday day out because the kids are out there dancing with throwing them coins and uh, so they perform for us. There's my ex-wife. <laughs> Isn't she a dandy? There we are. We're going uh, on a speeder. We're taking a ride down someplace. There's uh, the track foreman. He says, I'm going to take and show your wife this picture. Oh, geez. He says, don't do that. He's, he jumped up. This is up at the diamond mine. You'll see a mongoose here. They had one of those out at the zoo for a while. They had uh, some of the people having for pets over there. They make good pets and they, they're great for killing rats and that. See, here's a mongoose. He's going to go in and get some ice. This was a Swiss fellow that owned this diamond mine and he had all English people. Now this girl can put on a little dance. They're fishing here and washing clothes. And uh, there they are, they put that, uh, some kind of bark, uh, they do something with it, and then they put that in the water and it stuns the fish, and these girls are down there to catch the fish. Now ah, you can see, we had a little sun kink here, and they just left it right in there. And this is going up and running from the other end of the locomotive. You didn't know what end you are going to, if they are going to have the long nose ahead or the short nose, because uh, we couldn't be running over to Liberia Mining Company to why those engines, so that's the way they did it over there. Now, little narrow cuts there. Now, there's, there you can see we had a little sudden kink. They didn't bother taking out. This is a hand digging for diamonds. I'm going up over the mountain. Now I'm going to throw some cigarettes out and you'll watch there they come to get the cigarettes. There, there's, they're not very black over there. <laughs> there now, there's the woman with the big wash pan. There, oh, this is that place where the sun kink was in. That's right too. And they didn't take it out. They just left it right in there. There's Burma again. There's the laundromat. That no way, that's where a lot of the natives, uh, a lot of the natives lived. And then we'd have to, here's a, they had some cars, they laid there for a long time. We finally went and picked them up. The, that bill there, they, he's the one that had that uh, wreck at the Sun King. There, whenever we went out, we had one native that he'd pound the rice and cook for the crew there when we had a work train out to cook for all the natives. And I'm going up the railroad instead of the short end ahead, we got the long, long end that was ahead. Uh, that's one of the villages along the railroad. Now this is going up to the mine. This had quite a fill here. There, coming on a head man up at the mine. There's a truck that we had for transportation up there. This is when I was working up at the mine, and this is taken off the front porch of where I stayed up there. And that's all the buildings they had. The lab, and there's a down below right you'd see there. That's where they repaired all the equipment, the the trucks, and the all the mining equipment. Good. There's a fella with a monkey, he'd come to, he'd be shot and he'd go to sell. There's a little Momo. There's a, <coughs> there's a Fanta, that, that's made by Coca-Cola. There's Peter. He, he didn't show up for work one night, I was wondering where he was, and they said, well, they had him in jail. I said, what for? Oh, he got drunk, they took a machete and cut his wife's nose off. There's Sammy. Now you're going to see every morning and every night when I worked up at the mine, we had a passenger train. 
called it No Way Express, and here are the people come down to get on there. And there they, there's a passenger train. We got sand in those cars, and those were to haul the people to the No Way and back. I take the bunch over there, take them home, and then I'd have another bunch to bring back to the mine to work. And that was every morning, boy. That was real important. Run that No Way Express. There comes John with the pineapple for me. He's one of my brakemen. There's one of those business girls from Monrovia has come up to visit the fellow up at the mine. They're sending up the engine. Here's how they cut grass. It's a machete with a hook on it. <clears throat> There's a crocodile. Head there at the Bomi Hills. And I'm there you can see they didn't feed us very well there. There's Joe Girard, there's uh, there's Gundy from up the range. There's Lyman holding the monkey. Here's our mine superintendent, or that was a railroad superintendent uh, that they had come over there. He, the first night he got drunk and ran into a building and they finally had to send him home again because he, he was too heavy on the snorks there. And we're monkey with the crocodile again. That's Gundy with the crocodile. There's a fellow, what the heck, I forget what his name is. I can't remember some of these fellows now. That's <clears throat> There's a track foreman. Uh, going to go on a little trip here. We're going to go over because it's a holiday. Tony Rich is that name of the track foreman. Now we're heading for Congo Town. There, low windshield in the truck, no doors. There's Tony. There's the fellow from up the range, and that fellow's sitting down there with that black girl, that's Art Woods. He, he was an assistant mine superintendent. <laughs> there, you can see the kids putting on a little dance. There, they're throwing some money out there for him. There, they're playing soccer down there on the airfield we had down by Congo Town. There's Tony, he must be checking something there. There. Leaving the mine. Kind of muddy around there, you can see that. There's a big laundromat there. <coughs> there comes Peter, he was from Holland. He was our yard master up there at the mine. Real nice guy. Now I'm shoveling empties up to the, put underneath the loaning pocket. There we had a little problem with water in the ore there. They finally got that squared away, but it was real bad. This is going back to through the jungle there someplace. I forget where we're going. That. Look how it's right, it's raining there. You can see that. You're going to go through the water hole. That, that's, uh, Pee Wee Ross driving that car. There we went fishing that one day and we had a car top boat and we went down to the mouth and when we start, decided to come back the tide was going out. We had one heck of a time getting back. We, there we had, finally had, some of us had to get out of the boat. We didn't think we were going to get back up there again. We'd, then we didn't catch any fish. Now this is coming into uh, Bomi Hills. That is on R.W. Johnson's uh, railroad, and uh, they had CTC. There, this curve here, I've seen lots of cars and trucks in there. Those natives could never get around that curve. Now, this isn't, the picture isn't too good here. There, it goes straight ahead, and that goes into to where R.W. Work, worked, and then this here is coming into where we worked at Bomi Hills, out of Bomi Hills. Now that's K 
Kendall Fish. That's the Lakes Brothers steamship, and George Madison is a skipper on there. George Madison from Knife River. This is outside of Germany, and that's some ships that got sunk, I think, during World War II. There's George Madison, the skipper of the Kendall Fish. He had a fellow that worked on the ship there worked for him, and he took these pictures, and George had him make a copy of it, and George was nice enough to give me the copy of the, of the film. This here is a boat, I forget, he told us that come out of one of the Scandinavian countries and uh, they uh, wanted to know what their position, they were headed for the Bahamas. And uh, so he circled around there and wondered if they needed food or anything, no, they didn't need anything, but uh, they just wanted to know what their position was. There, G.A. Madison, uh, July 1963. There's George. Look at the situation over. There's a, there's a big storm in the North Atlantic. This is he heading home, and he said that his brother was on a ship up ahead of him, and they we were talking over the radio every day. But then they lost contact with him. I guess that his brother went headed. Uh, he was going to go into a different port, so he headed south. And uh, he says this was one heck of a big storm. You can see how that ship is heading into that sea. Now it'll start rolling, I suppose. Yeah, you're going to put it in the trough there a little bit so it'll get a little roll. Yeah, you sure got some nice pictures here. There, you got to roll in in a trough now. Yeah, that's just about at the end of it now, I think. Get pretty close to the end. Oh yeah, he went. He went down and took some out of the porthole too, but they didn't get so good. These here, there, there he is. There he's taking some out of the porthole. 